seriously, my drawing and sketching life is forever changed. This week I had a bit of an epiphany in the art supplies department. I've been trying to do more sketching lately and of course one of my favorite things is to sketch our portraits and so inadvertently I've been ending up doing all of these like really small portrait studies in my sketchbook just because I want multiple ones on a page. I'll show you one of my latest spreads here. So you can see the facial features on these people. Like here's my hand for comparison, very tiny. So while I've been drawing those, I've literally been using a 0.2 millimeter mechanical pencil to try and get some of that fine detail in the facial features. But I've also been using one of my favorite erasers, which this is the Tombow Mono Zero 2.3 millimeter pen eraser thing. But at the moment, even that eraser isn't cutting it for me. Every time I would go to refine some detail in the eye or something. I just felt like I was erasing the entire eye out of existence. I'm not entirely sure how I got onto this topic, but at some point I must have just been taking a break out of frustration for continuously erasing entire facial features, and I ended up on something that was talking about refining small details in drawings and stuff, and something that got continuously brought up was an electric eraser. So I thought, you know what, sure, let's try that. I have had an electric eraser in my collection for years years, and I'm not entirely sure why I stopped using it or whatever, but I thought, you know, this can't hurt. I already have one. I grabbed this one out of my drawer once I found it and tried to resurrect it, which I did succeed in because the batteries in it had like exploded all over the inside, but I did get it back into working order, thankfully. And oh my god, you guys, why on earth <laughs> did it take me this long to use one of these? So the one that I've had for like a decade at this point that is now my new favorite thing is the Derwent one, which it seems like they make this exact same one still because I did look it up just in case I couldn't bring this one back from the dead. This one's a pretty compact design so it would fit in a pencil case nicely. The button is on the side for this one, like on one of the thinner sides. It's kind of like an ovally rectangular shape and it has of course the eraser on the end which I have sharpened mine for this one which we will get into how to do that efficiently in a moment too. Yeah, this one you uses two AAA batteries and overall for use it's pretty easy to handle when you're pressing the button and just the control of it seems pretty good. I have very small hands and even though this is more of a wider one it doesn't seem to be an issue for me. I've sharpened the eraser point on mine of course to give it that really fine precise erasing capabilities which PSA for anyone who needs it the best way to sharpen an electric eraser tip is with one of these bad boys. Yes those sandpaper black that are in like every sketching kit that no one seems to actually know what to do with. No, but I tried many a technique to see if there was anything better, but no, this is, this is the way. <laughs> Easiest way for this, just turn the eraser on, hold it against it, and shape the point to your desired effect. But when I first did this, I thought that the point was gonna like crumble off like nothing when I went to try and use it, but this thing is actually holding up perfectly, which is awesome. But the whole reason this works so well for fine detail is because of its electricity electric capabilities. When you're using something like the Mono Zero, even though this is a much more fine eraser point, you're still having to scrub at the page with it to create the friction to erase the graphite. But with the electric eraser, you're just turning it on, having it rotate, and that rotation is creating that friction to erase whatever you're trying to. And because this is rotating, it is staying in the exact area where you actually want to erase. As opposed to with a traditional eraser, even if you're erasing something large, you're essentially having to erase larger than the area that you actually want to erase to create that friction all across the area where you need it. So there's my science lesson on electric erasers apparently. So when I realized I love this thing so much I actually decided to pick up a second one. Now this one looks a lot more similar to a lot of the ones that you can buy now. It's just like a random one off of Amazon but you can see how much more pen shaped it is. It is significantly longer. Here is it compared to my other one. So some people might prefer this because it does feel like you're just holding like a thick, it's very like Wacom tablet pen shaped on the end. So a lot of people might prefer this for 
for just usage and ergonomics like holding it. But the reason that I decided to pick a second one up and very specifically this one is because this one comes with this adapter where you can use even smaller eraser bits in. So there you can see the difference between the two eraser sizes even when they're sharpened. I believe that the eraser bits that this one holds are actually 2.3 millimeters which is the same size as the eraser bits for the Tombow Mono Zero. So you can imagine just even without sharpening how small and fine the erasing capability detail is with this one. I have a bunch of my eraser refills in here. From what I can see basically all electric erasers use like the same standardized I believe it's five millimeter eraser bits. So you can see how much of a size difference there is between those two eraser pieces. Here's a comparison with how these two erasers sound. They both use the same batteries so in theory they should make about the same amount of noise or at least spin at the same level of rotation and vibration within them. But this is the Derwent one and this is the pen one. This one sounds very similar to like an electric toothbrush, which might just be because of the shape of the presumably motor as well as the casing. It's just, you know, that more uh, cylindrical design. So they both make about the same amount of noise. This one I feel like makes a bit more, but that could just be because of having the larger nib on the end. But seriously, if you're not using an electric eraser, I clearly can't recommend them enough for you to try out. They're really not that expensive. This one I believe is like 12 Canadian dollars, so like nine-ish or so US dollars, which of course, you know, depending on the place, you might be able to get it even cheaper. And this one was also around that price range and also came with a bunch of eraser refills, which is awesome. So I am set for a very long time for those. So yeah, let me know if you're someone that's been regularly using an electric eraser in their work. Also, please let me know if there's another art supply you think I should be using because clearly I could be doing better. But that is everything. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me ramble on about electric erasers for however many minutes at this point, and I will see you in my next video.